Hi everyone. Hi mom. Okay, so somebody had left a comment on my channel saying that they appreciate that I tell them how to, you know, do some of my projects, but they wanted to see it. Um, yeah, it wasn't really a request. <laughs> it was more like a demand. <laughs> And I thought about how I could do this because I don't have pause on my camera. It doesn't come with a pause button. Um, and it takes way too long to edit things for me. I'm not that great at that kind of thing. I have no patience. So if I can do it all in one go, then, then I do tutorials. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've prepped each stage. So I have a bunch of envelopes already done. So I'm going to show you from start to almost finish uh, how I create uh, something like this. Um, this is a, a cover of one of my newest journals that I'm going to be. It's not. I'm not showing you the this exact one. I'm just going to show you, you know, the creative process. Okay. So I'm using up these um, envelopes that um, my friend Irene had gifted to me, and they are a six by nine. So you get a four and a half by six journal. Uh, you know, small, but really nice. I like the size of them. And it is a clasp here. So the first thing I do is I find my center. So I'll go ahead and fold that. And please bear with me because I'm not looking up at the camera at all now at this point. Somewhat find my center and give it a crease. And I'll explain why I do that for later. Then I use just one of these. Whatever's flat and thin works. Um, and I know this is all going to be upside down to you, but I just put it in the bottom flap and just sort of saw along to open up that bottom flap. And, it, you know, it's not going to be pretty, but you're going to stick it back down again anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. So there's the bottom opened, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the middle part as well. So again, just sawing it up, and I'm going to go about, you know, I'm going to go to the clasp pretty much, okay, so that I can open this up fairly easy. Okay, next step, I'm going to gesso the front. Now I'm using Pro Art Gesso. You can use any kind of gesso you want, homemade gesso even, if you choose. Uh, all you're really wanting to do is just prepping your envelope, preparing it to accept the glue without the buckling. And this was um, a recommendation from one of my subscribers, and it's what they do in fine art. I mean, I knew about prepping canvases to accept the paint, and. Uh, but didn't even think about using it for the envelope and it works just fantastically. So you can go ahead and get a whole bunch of these done up, you know, just gesso them all one day. Gesso doesn't take long to dry at all, so you can have a whole bunch already prepped and ready to go. Even if you're not kind of feeling crafty, um, you can at least prepare yourself for those times when you do. Then you don't have to wait. <laughs> I hate waiting. So I'm not doing like a super thick coat. It doesn't have to be really thick. And I go the length because that also helps eliminate the buckling rather than going up and down, which I find creates a little bit of wave. This seems to work for me. Now, as always, if you have a better solution, then just leave me a comment. For all those people who've been watching my tips, tricks, and tools, uh, I have been getting questions and different things that require an answer, but um, their channel, for some reason, doesn't allow me to leave a comment. So if you haven't heard from me, that's likely the reason. I try and answer every single one of my questions. Somebody also left me a message saying something about um, sending me something on Google Plus. I have not seen anything and I don't even know what to say. Um, yeah, I mean I do have a, 
a Gmail email <laughs> uh, that uh, people can send things to, and I believe it is attached to my Google Plus. So I'm definitely not ignoring you guys. So I'm just cleaning up a little bit here. And then I'm just going to dry this real quick so I can set it aside. And then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so I'm just going to set this one aside. Obviously, at that point, I would flip it over and I would do that side. But for time's sake, I'm just going to get right into the next stage. And you want to clean off um, anything like that off your craft mat. Because if it dries and flakes, whatever's damp, it will pick it up off your craft mat. Then you have a bunch of little things on your envelopes. Okay, so here is one that I've completed, still opened. So my next step is to add my Tyvek. Tyvek is really, 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 really durable. And uh, I like to add it for my spine so that it is more secure when I do my stitching down the middle. Uh, it's not going to tear through the envelope. That's why I open up the back and then I use the, I've been using this, the decoupage, it's Americana and it's a matte uh, sealer and glue. And I'm just going to apply it with a brush. Okay, so when I slip that into the envelope, I do it upside down so that your right side is facing you. That way when you go to slip this in, um, if the glue is here, you're going from the bottom because if the glue slides along here, it doesn't matter. I'm going to glue that down inside. But I don't want it at this end because this is going to be my pocket end. So I'm going to put it in like this, slide it along the bottom, like I'll have this open like that. I'm going to slide it in like that with the glue to about the center and then I'm going to push down so that uh, this is going to seal to the top part here. And not to worry, we're going to seal the whole thing, so I will show you. Let's go. So I get a fair amount in the center, making sure it's pretty covered, and then I'll work my edges, make sure I get all the way to the edge. As you can imagine, it's a pretty messy process. Um, but it really does work well. Okay, so I'm going to lift this up and do a real quick wipe here. Okay, so now my glue is here. And I'm going to open this envelope up like that. And then slide it in. I hope you guys can see this. Slide it in to about the middle. And I'm, you know, I'm guessing it's going to be close enough. Okay. And then I'm going to push. Now, you can use a brayer. My brayer's filthy dirty, so I can't use my brayer. Okay. Then I'm going to turn it over. And you've got it stuck down there nice. Okay. Now, if you open this up, you can kind of see, I don't know if you can, but I can kind of see where I have my fold line here. So that's going to be my border. I'm not going to put glue past that. So I'm just going to load up my brush, lay it flat, and sweep it back and forth right up to the fold line. And then I'm going to go right to the edge Sweep it back and forth, right to the edge. I mean, if you don't want to seal it completely closed, that's up to you. You don't have to do this. I just kind of like it that way. I don't know. It's, to me, it's a little bit more stable. Okay, then I'm going to put this one back down. 
And then I'm going to take my glue again and I'm going to run it along here so I can seal it back down again here. Now this part doesn't matter because you're going to cover all this with paper so if you get a little overage it doesn't matter. And then I'm just going to run some glue along the flap and fold that back up. And that's step two. Now it's really important that you let this dry really let it dry before you fold it in half again. Otherwise, you're going to get this. <laughs> so as you can tell, yeah, I didn't listen to my own advice. You'll see a little bit of buckle where what happens is the glue gets kind of caught and then it'll dry as a bubble, which, you know, like I honestly, I don't care. But I mean, if you're going to all this trouble and you want it nice and flat, then let it dry flat and then fold it in half. So we're gonna go from here. This one has the Tyvek, my pocket is open, everything's dry. And so now, third step is I'm going to add tissue today. So now I'm gonna show you a complete one that I did with um, napkin. But this one I wanted to show you a few techniques. So I crunch up my tissue and get some really nice wrinkles in it. I love this tissue. I have no idea where it's from. I think someone gifted it to me, but I don't remember. Okay, and I'm just going to tear some of it away. And I'll use that on a tag or something else. And I'm going to do that to the edge here, too. Okay. So, I, again, I know this is upside down. Well, I guess I could do it like that so you can see it. Okay, so now, again, I'm going to use my decoupage. And I'm going to cover this really well. And this time I am going to cover the flap with it. Normally I don't because I use a contrast, but this time I kind of want this tissue. I really like it. As far as creating goes, um, you know, people ask me, well, how do you know what you're going to do? You know, ahead of time and yes and no. Uh, sometimes I'll start out with an idea and it completely changes as I'm working. I, I think that's just the creative process. Uh, I think, you know, you can sort of figure out what mediums you want to use, possibly. I want to make sure that this is the right side. So this is my back. So I have to do it to, to me. So I'm not doing this upside down because I want my uh, envelope flap in the back. Okay, so when I lay this down, I'm going to crinkle it. Because that's the look I'm going for. I love using tissue. It's actually more forgiving than uh, napkins. Napkins are really delicate. And if you put too much decoupage glue when you're using a napkin, it will tear um, e more easily than something like this or cardstock. If you find you've missed some, just go back, add a little bit more. Make sure it's all stuck down nice. So that's stuck down pretty good. Now you can do two things. You, After this is dry, you can trim it or fold it under. If you're going to cover the inside from edge to edge, you can just go ahead and fold it. Or if you're not going to do that, you, I trim it off and then I use stays on ink to ink my edges because I add decoupage to the top of this. And then um, I do, you know, my techniques on top of this. Okay, so 
this one I'm not going to be able to show you, but I wanted to show you the crinkles. And this is what I'm going to do with it. Um, I'll just do it on the side here. This is glaze. So this is what I've, I've been using. It's also the uh, Americana, a medium glaze, dries clear, but you use one part of the glaze to one part of water. I personally used a little less. I like it better. And then I just simply added um, some of the paint, acrylic paint. You can use any color acrylic paint and get a really nice look. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub it on and then pounce it back off again. And then what it's going to do is lay in the crinkles. Now I can't show you that now because it's um, wet <laughs> and it'll just disappear in my crinkles. So you need to make sure that that is dry. So I'm going to go ahead and um, add my decoupage to the top so that it has a chance to dry. And then I'll show you um, another cover. Now you can see I'm not as mm, picky, let's say. I just want the, it, even though it is matte, it's going to have kind of a nice finish to it. And, and I love the effect of using the decoupage um, on the outside and then once I add my paper to the inside, doing that again and you get a real nice pliable cover without it feeling like it's going to tear on you. I tell you, I could just make covers <laughs> and not do anything else but make covers. I think it's fun. It's kind of like art journaling, you know, in a way, because you're just, yeah, creating art on an envelope. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry while I show you what I've done with the other one. Oop. Very sticky. Now the other one I've used a napkin on. And like I said, uh, they do tend to be uh, more mm, delicate. Now this one I decoupaged it on and then I would go ahead and decoupage over top of it. Okay, which I've just done. I've just shown you. So we'll skip that one. And then I'll show you the finished one. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in for you. And take you through the steps. Alright. Now, once my decoupage was dry, I added a stencil. So I have this stencil here. And all I did was took some, it's acrylic paint, but it's the Martha Stewart green metallic. So that's what I used here. And I just laid down my stencil and I took um, a sponge and I just sponged it in, just like that. Okay. And then I took this paint, which is also Martha Stewart. I've just put it in a fine line. Um, bottle. So it has a super fine tip, really skinny, almost like a needle really. And I just drew in my gold where I wanted it, just randomly, you know, no thought, just kind of do it as it, you know, whatever, whatever you're feeling. And then um, I didn't do a whole lot more. I did sponge on some uh, Inca gold, but in the turquoise. So there are blobs of turquoise. Let's see if I can just hold that up. There, you can see the blobs of turquoise. You can see the stenciling here. Um, and then you can see where I've drawn on the wing. Some of the flowers have been outlined. And then what I'm going to do is take my stays on. I'm going to rub my stays on along the edges. It won't show on the dark edges, but it will show on the lighter edges and kind of just frame what I've done. Okay, so I'm going to give this a whirl uh, with, with you. How much time do I have? I'm at 19 minutes, so I'm going to have to do this quick. I'm going to go ahead and dry this one 
with the heat gun. Hopefully to the point that I can actually show you my process. So I have lots of this tissue. If I screw it up, I can always do another one. <laughs> Now, this is why I don't do a lot of process videos because like I said I don't I don't really I don't know how to splice my movies together my my camera will only film 30 minutes at a time and then it becomes you know two segments and I think people just kind of get bored with part one part two part three part four you know so I try and do things that I can finish quickly try and work in sections that uh, are drier than others so I think I'll work here in the background so I've got a baby wipe and it's not soaking it, it is damp it's not soaking wet though and I'm just gonna try this in sections now keep in mind you guys I just play I don't know if it's gonna work I just try it you know and if it doesn't work, I cover it up with something else. But I kind of want to make this look like an old book, you know? So we're going to see what happens. Hopefully I won't uh, lift all the paper off. But we'll see. Now this part that's still white, that that will dry clear, so I'm not too worried about the look of that at the moment. Okay, and I'm gonna do this side since it didn't lift. So this um, technique is similar to doing crackle without having to use the crackle medium. So if you really like that look, um, but you don't have crackle, this is how you can do that. Yeah, I'm loving the way that's looking. I think it needs more over here though. Okay, I'm going to hit it with the heat gun and see what happens.
Okay. I'm, I really like the way that's turning out. Uh, so what I would be doing next is once this is dry, I would take my Inca Gold. Now, the little ones I find dry out real quick. This one is really hard. So that's why I use a sponge. And what I do is uh, take my spritzer and just, you know, put a few spritzes, is that a word? <laughs> on, on the uh, sponge and just kind of rub it like so. And then I gently pounce it. If I want more, I pounce harder. You know, that's really what it's all about for me. So if you start out light, you can always add, but it's much harder to take off. Now this one, I may leave it. Like, it's such pretty paper. That might be all I do, but knowing me, yeah, I'll probably do something else to it. But I need it to dry. That's really uh, my only recommendation for mixed media. Make sure you give yourself enough time to maybe have two going. One, you know, that you've worked on the day before and then work on another one. That one will be dry. You can go back and forth, you know, to, to add your textures and different layers and just, you know, play with your um, supplies on hand. You don't have to go out and purchase a whole pile of different things uh, to do mixed media. Just look around. Whatever has texture can be inked and stamped. And that's really all it is. It's just playing and having a lot of fun. I've shown it before. Um, I had this little silicone pot thingamajiggy that I just cut up in smaller pieces and longer pieces and you know I'll, I might just uh, ink it up and lay it on there. I did it with some uh, Inca Gold too. I, I'll show you actually uh, that particular way of doing it and this one I love the color of this one this turquoise and these are really really creamy the big ones for some reason and I just take my finger and just uh, rub it over top of you know whatever I'm using and it doesn't have to be fully covered and then I just lay it down and gently give it a push lift it off and I've got some texture I've added a little color. Can you see that? I don't know, maybe the light's too bright there. But, you know, you can do this, do that with uh, ink. It doesn't have to be ink of gold. You can just use regular ink. But I like to add a little color to whatever it is I'm working on. Uh, I do like neutrals, but I always like them with a hit of something. So, there you go just adds a little something. Oh, and my other thing was I wanted to tell you when you gesso, don't gesso over the glue. It'll just smear. It doesn't work. So I'm going to have to sign off now. My time's almost up. So I hope this was helpful. Please uh, like and, uh, you know, tell me what you think. Bye.